ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Perry, yes. Uh, some of the clowns and I were talking back said, would you take a picture with us? I would be honored okay. and flattered and absolutely delighted to take a picture. Okay. But oh look, oh look at isn't this marvelous? <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 What's wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Now I can't take a picture with everybody in makeup and me without makeup. We've got to have Ooh. a clown makeup somehow. Uh, wait a minute, I have an idea. Don't go away. Anybody got a paper wrapper, a chocolate candy wrapper or something? Yeah, wait a minute. Oh, I, this is gonna work terrific. Give me an orange peel. Okay, now, Mr. K, say cheese. Uh-huh. Road clerk. When I was a kid, maybe eight or nine or ten years old, a tented circus came to Madison, Wisconsin, and it was just amazing. We had to leave halfway through, so we left, and I went, I wonder what happened in the second half. So I spent the rest of my life trying to find out. <laughs> and a friend of mine read a parade magazine and about that big of an article that clown, that Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College was now accepting female candidates. And he said, you gotta read that. And I looked and I went, that's for me, I'm out of here. I went home and told my parents, I'm gonna go to clown college. <laughs> All right. I broke my foot on the third day, <laughs> and Mr. Ballantyne said, well, we're going to have to send you home. I've already got a two-month rental on my little apartment, that, and I said, please let me stay. He said, well, you won't be eligible for a contract because you can't take all the classes. And I said, fair game. He said, well, we, we want you to at least make an appearance in the show for the graduation. I had a dilapidated ballerina with, with when I would point my toes, the foam rubber came out to here, and then I'd try to step on it, and it would squish down. It, so Mr. Ballantyne comes to my apartment. He knocks on the door, and this is early Sunday morning, and, and I went, I, and he said, I want to take you over to talk with Mr. Feld, Mr. Irvin Feld. And um, I went in there, and he said, have a seat. And I sat down, and he said, how's your foot? And I said, I'm fine, oh, it's going to be fine. And, and uh, it's fine. You don't complain, <laughs> right? You're glad to be there. And he said, so, I'd like to offer you a contract. And I said, Oh, but I'm not eligible for a contract. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, what do you mean? Um, and I said, because uh, I broke my foot, I couldn't take all the class, and I went through the whole reason why he couldn't hire me. <laughs> and then I decided to shut up. Because <laughs> he had a contract, and he pulled it out of a folder, and he kind of slid it toward me, and he said, he said, uh, well, here's one thing you're going to learn, show business, is not a democracy. <laughs> I own the show and I want to offer you a contract. And I thought, game changer. <laughs> it all worked out great for 48 years, really. We would like to invite to the ring the chairman and chief executive officer of Feld Entertainment, Mr. Kenneth Feld. Hello everybody, I'm so happy to be here and with a lot of enthusiasm that we recognize Peggy Williams and her induction into the Circus Ring of Fame. Peggy's contributions to Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, as well as the entire circus industry as a whole, have literally made history. She was the first female graduate of Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Clown College to ever appear in The Greatest Show on Earth. Her accomplishments as a performer, instructor, and mentor paved the way for many aspiring artists. In 1980, she distinguished herself again by becoming the first woman assistant performance director in the history of Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey. And again, as performance director for the special international edition of The Greatest Show on Earth that toured Japan. All of these accomplishments are outstanding, and for that alone, Peggy Williams belongs in the Circus Ring of Fame.
But I believe where Peggy shines above all others is in her passion for teaching and sharing her belief that the circus is good for your soul. Her leadership in circus works was created as a resource for teachers that brought the circus themes into the classroom, making learning fun, exciting, and unforgettable for hundreds of thousands of children across the United States. On a more personal note, I have to thank Peggy for helping us initiate our Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey archiving project that will preserve the, the history of the past 56 years of The Greatest Show on Earth. And it's now with great pride that I welcome Peggy Williams to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, Peggy Williams. How you doing? I know you've been sitting a long time and we've seen some amazing people and I'm looking at you as the amazing people who inspired me. It was the inspiration of all the people that performed in tented shows in the Midwest in the, in the early late 60s and early 70s that inspired me to want more of that in my life and I found a way to get it. One way was you know, that was 52 years ago I went to Clown College. Clown College was a starter. Thank you. <clears throat> Clown College was a starter program for so many of us. It was a foot in the door to the world of the circus. So I want to thank you for the inspiration that you and the generations of your families have given to all of us. I learned a lot at the circus, not what I thought I'd learn. I learned a lot of foreign language words, most of them not so good in the beginning. <laughs> but I did not know. <laughs> I learned that I shouldn't say those words too loud. When we had winter quarters in Venice, Florida, I remember one particular instance where we learned more about economics than any classroom teacher could possibly teach because the Felds paid us our salary in $2 bills. The entire show was paid in $2 bills. And the question was, does the circus have any value in Venice or does it just come and use the property? And what happened within three days, it's in my journal, within three days, every till in town had $2 bills in it underneath. Anybody remember that? You can take challenges on and be creative in the solution of them and let the solution speak for itself. You know, the circus cast, and many of you are part of that, past, present, and future, the circus cast makes people feel better because they love what they do and they express the, the, the absolute pursuit of excellence in every performance, every day. I love that. But what I really love about it too is that it encourages us to be better tomorrow than today. I love that that happens in the circus. I also love um, <clears throat> the fact that the circus is filled with mentors. Yesterday when we were talking with the Circus Next Youth, we were talking about mentors and who teaches you what you know and how to perform? Who teaches you how to do the makeup as a clown? Who teaches you the sway pole? Who teaches you the balancing acts? Who teaches you? And the circus is a prime example of mentorship Personally, I lucked out. My mentors 
were all men who played drag. <laughs> <I'm> just saying. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And the circus shows you how to treat immigrants. Immigrants is a big political topic right now. We had a most extraordinary thing that happened in 1975. The Red Unit was playing California. We went to Camp Pendleton, the Marine base there, because the airlift of Vietnamese orphans had landed there, and they were living in a tent city in Camp Pendleton, and every Marine had eight kids, all orphans. These kids didn't know their family history. They didn't know live entertainment. They'd been living in a war zone. They got, they got taken out by a, a wonderful American pilot on a really big plane. They never knew movies. They never knew radio. They never knew circus. And we, were, we had the chance to go there, perform for them in one ring, and show them what circus is all about. They learn how to be audience members. They learn how to laugh and scream and clap their hands. And the Marines taught them thumbs up because it was a great experience. I think that's how we should treat immigrants now. That's just my little. So it was easy to do because it was about seeing value in their life that they had no idea was there. I just want to thank my sponsor, Kenneth Bell. Thank you. I want to thank the Ring of Fame because it is a very meaningful thing, very meaningful to Sarasota, to Sarasota County, to Florida, to the world of the circus. And I think we're going to see great things continue to come because I think the staff of the Ring of Fame right now is guns forward on lots of good stuff. And I think we all should support that. I wanted to thank all the other people who are inducted this week, today, because I worked with all of them. I've worked with the Alexis Brothers and the Blue Unit. I worked with Father Jerry for many reasons, in many seasons, for many occasions, some sad, some happy, but all real. He was very real, and I love him for that. And I want to thank um, Jeanette Williams. She's one person that has always been honest to me about the circus and her viewpoint of it, and I appreciate that. There's no polish on her opinion. I love it. I love it for what it is. Come on, right? And in closing, when I was in college at the University of Wisconsin the summer before, I finished the summer before Clown College started, I had a sign on my dorm, in the back of my dorm door when you shut the door. It was my motivational comment, and it said, as you pretend to be, be really. And I chose to be happy, to find things that made me and other people happy. And I'm so grateful I found that in this circus. Thank you all for your contribution. Let's hear it one more time. Peggy Williams.